for the People's House, right? Let's discuss that and more with Congressman Lloyd Doggett, a Democrat from Texas. Congressman, uh, thank you so much for joining us. First, um, you know, let me get your reaction to these last few days on Capitol Hill. What are your big takeaways uh, when you see the chaos that we just witnessed? Do you expect this kind of chaos to carry on over the next two years? Well, thanks, Eamon. We're really part of about a two-year marathon. Uh, for the majority party to select its speaker is supposed to be the easy part. It's like the runner putting on his uh, shoes. You don't get any applause at that point normally. In this case, <laughs> the runner, Mr. McCarthy, has tripped over his shoes about 14 times before he became speaker. Uh, now we have uh, this crowd of Republicans, and it's pretty hard to find a moderate Republican these days. I think you can count them on your fingers. Uh, but you've got this crowd of, of Republicans uh, that McCarthy is indebted to. Uh, and when we face a crisis, uh, perhaps a natural or a man-made crisis over coming months, we're going to be in a position where he's not really capable of negotiating a solution. Uh, when we have to pass the legislation to keep the government in operation, when we come up to the question of the full faith and credit of the United States, if Ukraine needs more resources, these are the kind of major questions where it's not just the chaos of the last week, but what it portends about chaos going forward uh, on these major questions that affect the, our families and the world. Yeah, and, and these are in fact major questions, and, and I want to ask you about the substance and the style of what you can expect from the Republicans, because if last week was an indicator, it, it does not bode well uh, for you and your colleagues. I mean, at one point during the 14th vote, you had Republican Congressman Mike Rogers, who had to physically be restrained from going after his own colleague, Matt Gates. So if the GOP can't keep things civil between one another, how do you expect them to work across the aisle with you and your colleagues? I think it will be very difficult. Uh, and as you know, mixed into all this is the ever presence of Donald Trump. Uh, he uh, had an influence in this race, ironically a speaker elected at the same time we are honoring the second anniversary of the uh, attempt by Donald Trump to overthrow our government. Uh, but I think it will be a big challenge. There certainly are some small matters uh, that I'm working with some Republicans on trying to pass, but on the major questions of the day, our foreign policy, our national security, the appropriations necessary to provide essential services to families across our country. Uh, those are going to be really tough because we, we will have a group of Republicans who really don't believe in government. And I guess to some extent they're right when they say government's never the answer because when they're in charge, it seldom can be right. the answer. <laughs> What, it, what concerns you about the rules package? I mean, it, it's obviously going to be the center of what may have been compromised between Kevin McCarthy and this, um, you know, this far-right members of the Republican caucus. What kind of impact will those new rules have on the ability to legislate? What are you concerned about? Well, there are many aspects of it that are troubling, including aspects that uh, McCarthy had agreed to before he ever got himself into this situation. Uh, one of those that always bothers me is uh, the only way you can have uh, an increase in a necessary expenditure for education or health under their plan is to cut something else. But they don't apply that to taxes. Taxes have the same effect, uh, these major cuts uh, that they did under Trump, they have the same effect as increases in spending. But they don't want to provide for paying for those cuts. Then there's the role that uh, uh, will be permitted that uh, any member of the House can, can call for the uh, Speaker's uh, basically removal. Uh, and that's something they will hang over uh, Speaker McCarthy's head anytime there's serious negotiations about a problem where the Senate has agreed on something and the President has agreed on something and all that remains is for the House to come together and he will not have the capacity to do that. What? You know, with Republicans now in the driver's seat in the Congress over the next two years, what game plan do Democrats, you and your colleagues, have over the next two years? What, what do you guys do over the next two years? Will, will there be even uh, more pressure on, on President Biden to use executive action, or w what do you plan on doing? Well, we do need to ensure, particularly in areas like the climate crisis, where we made such progress last fall with the uh, legislation we adopted 
on incentives to engage more families in fighting the climate crisis. We need to be sure on that and on pollution that the president is using all of his authority. The same thing is true with reference to worker safety and the standards for our workers. Uh, but on some other areas that are very important to me, uh, the right of uh, choice of women to control their own bodies, we have to stand up for our principles and advocate them forcefully, even if we can't pay, pass the legislation we need uh, to protect those rights. We need to provide a respectful alternative to the extremist policies that the Republicans are advocating. The first bill up, uh, that, uh, appropriately, I guess, after the rules package that they've scheduled next week, is basically a, a bill for tax cheats. Uh, they propose to eliminate 90 percent of the funding that we increased last year uh, to enforce the provisions of the Internal Revenue Code. We know that over the last decade, there's been a decline by about 75 yeah. percent of audits for those at the top, and that's they propose to eliminate. Um, I want to ask you about your party's leadership. You have a new party leader, Congressman, not party leader, but certainly party leader within Congress, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries. Let me play for you a bit of his first speech as yes. minority leader. We are white, we are black, we are Latino, we are Asian, we are Native American. We are Christian, we are Jewish, we are Muslim, we are Hindu, we are religious, we are secular, we are gay, we are straight, we are young, we are older, we are women, we are men, we are citizens, we are dreamers, out of many, we are one. That's what makes America a great country. And no matter what kind of haters are trying to divide us, we're not going to let anyone take that away from us, not now, not ever. I don't think you could have casted a more contrasting speech to go before Kevin McCarthy Indeed. if you tried in Hollywood or anywhere. I mean, put aside policy for a moment, just the oratory skills of uh, Leader Jeffries were quite remarkable uh, in that display. What does it say about his, uh, his leadership, his, his skills, and, and what role he will play in the next crucial few years? Well, it was a beautiful speech. It powerfully laid out what our priorities are and what our values and principles are. And uh, all the more powerful in that he delivered that speech about one in the morning after a very long uh, day's work. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I think is equally important to his great uh, ability as a communicator is his ability as a leader. Time after time on those 14 votes, there were 212 Democrats 212 Democrats uh, voting for Hakeem Jeffries. We're working together. We have a big ten in our party, some great diversity among the different elements of our party, but our working together with Hakeem and our new leadership is what will give us strength to win in 2024 uh, and uh, to stand up to the worst of the extremism we can expect from the Republicans. Uh, sir, before I let you go, I wanted to ask you, um, you sit on the House and Ways, the House Ways and Means Committee, which, um, of course, before uh, the Democrats lost control, uh, you released years of Trump's tax returns. The information is now public. What next? Well, we saw that uh, Trump had uh, big credits that were never, big losses, big credits, big deductions that were never audited until we began investigating this by the Internal Revenue Service. I think we make the case based on the experience with Trump that the first bill these Republicans are offering is only designed to help tax cheats. They need to believe in law and order for enforcing our tax code as much as they do in other forms of law and order. Uh, I think that there may be some more work for the Democratic-controlled Senate to do with reference to Trump's tax returns and certainly to see that those audits get completed uh, of, of his uh, returns and that he pays what's due. Uh, Texas Congressman uh, Lloyd Doggett, sir, thank you so much for joining us this Saturday evening. Greatly appreciate